Praise the Lord. Before we hear the preach of God's word today, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank the Lord for thy faithfulness. Thank in thee that man shall labor but alone, but every word is proceeded out of thy mouth. As all scripture is given by inspiration of thee, thy word which goeth forth out of thy mouth shall not return back to thee void, but accomplish thou shalt please, and prosper in the thing which thou hast sent it. O Lord, as newborn babes we desire, then sincere milk of thy word, whereby we may grow thereby. Sanctify us with thy truth, for thy word is truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. If we hear the preach of God's word, let us turn to Bible's book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4. In the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4, it is written, But he, the Lord Jesus Christ, answered and said, Once again, Christ is the answer. And where do we find the answer of Christ? In the Word of God. But he, the Lord Jesus Christ, answered and said, It is written. Whatever Christ said, it is written. He speaks to us according to the written Word of God. It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The written word of God. The Holy Scriptures which is given to us by inspiration of God goeth forth out of the mouth of God. Christ says it proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The written word of God, the Holy Scriptures, which are given by inspiration of God, is the same as if God spoke to you in an audible voice. For God's word proceedeth out of his mouth. First Peter, in the book of First Peter, uh, sorry about that, Second Peter chapter 1. In verse 16, the apostle Peter writing under the inspiration of the ghost writes, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Verse 17, For he received from God the Father honor and glory, where there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Without a shadow of a doubt, the Apostle Peter, along with James and John, heard the audible voice of God that thundered, that spoke to them from heaven above. How many today say, God told me this, and God told me that? And God said this, and God said that, and I had a dream, and God said this, and God said that. The Apostle Peter actually heard the very voice of God, which thundered from heaven, who said, This is my beloved Son, and whom I am well pleased. Verse 18, And this voice which came from heaven, not from his heart, not from his own spirit, because how many today they'll think that if their heart says something, that's God speaking to my heart. Or if their spirit says something, that's God speaking to my spirit. God told my heart. I heard God speak to my heart. I heard God speak to my spirit, not the apostle Peter. He heard a voice which came from heaven, verse 18. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard, were with them in the holy mount. And then verse 19. We have also, we Christians today, we, along with the apostles Peter, James, and John, who heard the voice of God from heaven, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto do well that you take heed, as unto light that shineth in a dark place, 
and to the day dawn and the day star are rising heart, knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scriptures give up any private interpretation, for the prophecy came that old time by the will of men, but holy men of God speak, as they're moved by the Holy Ghost. What we have here in the B-I-B-L-E, in the authorized version of the Holy Bible, is a more sure word of prophecy. More sure than what? than even hearing a voice from heaven. So no matter what anybody says God told them, or what anybody says they had a dream about, or a vision about, or God spoke to their heart, or any such thing as that, what we have in our hands is more sure than that. It is more sure than if an apostle heard the voice of God from heaven above, this Bible, these holy scriptures, is more sure than that, for it proceedeth out of the mouth of God. When you hear God's word, when you read God's word, it is the same as if God is speaking to you directly. For Christ says, every word proceedeth out of the mouth of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. God's word is God speaking to us. As the Apostle Peter, writing under this verse, writes, that we do well if we take heed, not to visions and dreams, not to what somebody says God told their heart or God told them, you do well if you take heed to this more sure word of prophecy, the word of God, which proceedeth out of the mouth of God, the scriptures that are given by inspiration of God. And let us return now to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, in the Holy Scriptures, in the Word of God, Matthew, chapter 24, verse 36, once again. It is written, a more sure word of prophecy, more sure than even hearing a voice from heaven above, it is written, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, nor not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Christ says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. He's coming, and when he does come, it's going to be quick. It's going to be, as the Bible says, as a twinkling of an eye when Christ comes again. First Corinthians chapter 15, once again it is written. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. How long would it take? In a moment. How much is a moment? In the twinkling of an eye. And once again, for many years, I've thought the twinkling of an eye was your eye blinks. And your eye does blink pretty fast, doesn't it? That's real fast. But that's faster. Twinkling of an eye is faster than your eye blinking. The twinkle of an eye is when the light hits the eye and the little shine comes there. That's how fast Christ is coming again as the speed of light in the twinkling of of an eye. For Christ says in Revelation, in the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, chapter 22, the last chapter of the last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, the Lord Jesus Christ says, And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. How quick is quickly? In the twinkling of an eye, the speed of light. The same time that the light reflects off your eye and it twinkles, that's how quick Christ is coming again. You won't have time to get ready. You won't have time to prepare when that trumpet sounds, when Christ comes again, because he is coming quickly. 
Therefore, you must always be ready because Christ says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, nor of the angel of heaven, but my Father only. Therefore, you have got to always be ready. We don't know the day. We don't know the hour. He is coming again. No man knows. Not even the angels of heaven. Only the Father knows the day Christ is coming again. Jesus Christ says, it is not for you to know. Acts 1 verse 7, the times of the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. It's not for us to know, because no man can know it, as Christ already says. When he does come, he comes in the twinkling of an eye. He's coming quickly, and his reward is with them. Who did Christ speak this to? At Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, keeping everything in context. At Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, it is written, And as he, the Lord Jesus Christ, set up on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of the coming, and of the end of the world? Verse 3, note the word privately. All scriptures given by inspiration of God. That word is important, privately. Christ did not tell these things to the world. Christ did not give these scriptures to be preached to the world. Because even if you preach these scriptures to the world, it will be of no avail. Because it is written once again in 2 Peter, and God has magnified his word above all of his name. You can't go against God's word. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his, the Lord Jesus Christ, coming? For since the, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. The Bible already tells us that in the last days, there will be scoffers walking after their own lusts. And how many today are walking after their own lusts? And as they're walking after their own lusts, they will be saying, and they say today, where is the promise of his coming. All they're concerned about is the lust of the flesh. This morning, we heard down below us in this neighborhood below us a lot of noise, a lot of yelling and screaming, and we looked out the balcony, and they're giving away free food because of the current global pandemic. And people are not worried about their soul state on the Lord's day. They're not seeking the Lord on the Lord's day. No, they're concerned about the lust of the flesh getting enough food to eat. What concerns them is food. What concerns them is the lust of the flesh. And after they get all that free food from the government, whoever it was that gave that free food out, then what did they do after it this afternoon? They partied like there is no tomorrow. They were celebrating, and the happiest song that they know to sing was Happy Birthday, and they sing Happy Birthday all afternoon long. Now, of course, praise God, my birthday is tomorrow. I'll be 46 years old, April the 20th, year 2020. I'll be 46 years old. So as they sing Happy Birthday at first, I thought it would be funny to yell thank you to them. But they sing it all day long. And even as my birthday tomorrow, it got old hearing them sing happy birthday. Now, why were they singing happy birthday for? Because that's how happy they were. And that's the happiest song they knew. And they're singing all day long because of the lust of the flesh. All they cared about was food. All they cared about was having enough to eat. All they cared about was fulfilling the lust of the flesh. And as they walk after their own lust, the Bible says they'll be saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the Father fell asleep, all things as it were from the beginning of the creation. Therefore, Christ and Matthew chapter 24 did not speak these things to the world. Because it is written 
And Matthew chapter 24, once again, he spoke these sayings to his disciples, verse 3, privately. Why privately? And why not to the world? Because the Lord already knows that at the end of the world, the last days, they'll be walking after their own lusts, saying, where is the promise of his coming? Therefore be in vain to preach the things of the end times to the world. It would be in vain to preach the second coming of Christ as the gospel. It will not lead anybody to repentance. It will not lead anybody to salvation. For once again, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37, Christ calls the days before he comes again as the days of who? But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be as the days of Noah. Noah, not only did he find grace in the Son of the Lord, not only is a just man and perfect in his generations, not only did Noah walk with God, he was also a man of faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Noah pleased God. How do we know Noah pleased God? Because he was a man of faith. How do we know that Noah is a man of faith? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. Through these examples of the Old Testament, we find out what faith is. Hebrews chapter 11. Once again, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is. What is faith? Because faith pleases God. Verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What is faith? It pleases God is what it is. And there's examples here in Hebrews chapter 11 to teach us what faith is. Verse 7, by faith Noah. Noah was a man of faith. And as Noah was a man of faith, Noah pleased God. What does Christ say? His, the days before his coming shall be as? It shall be as the days of Noah. And who is this man Noah? He was a man that pleased God. And how did he please God? Because Noah, by faith, he was a man of faith. And as these days before Christ comes again, or as the days of Noah, if we desire to please God as Noah pleased God, we must be people of faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. How did Noah please God back in the days before the flood? He was a man of faith. If there's ever a time to be a man or woman of faith, now is the time. If there is ever time for Christians to walk by faith and not by sight, now is the time. If there ever was a time for Christians to live by faith, as the Bible says, the just shall live by faith, now is the time. Because when Christ comes again, he's coming quickly in the twinkle of an eye at the speed of light. And the only way to be ready, the only way to be prepared, the only way to please the Lord as Noah pleased the Lord is to be a man or woman of faith. Now is the time. But today, there are so many profess to be Christians, they have no faith in God. Just a few months ago to Lord's Day, I was invited to a local Thai church and gave them a testimony a normal testimony of a Christian who lives by faith. What does a Christian live by faith do? Gives. If you don't give, you have no faith. 
<laughs> That's the basic basics of faith is giving. If you don't know how to give, you don't have any faith. The Bible starts off in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4 with who? One example does God's word for us give us in Hebrews chapter 11 about faith? Abel, verse 4, by faith, Abel, what did Abel do by faith? Offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Faith, people of faith, offer. Offer what? Sacrifices. No, giving a tithe is not faith. 10% of tithe already belongs to the Lord. That's God's already. If you can't even give a tithe to the Lord, the Bible calls you a thief. The Bible says you're robbing God. Malachi chapter 3, the last book of the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 3. If you didn't know how to pronounce the Hebrew, you could call him Malachi. Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Verse 9, uh, verse 8, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, where have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Paying tithes, giving tithes, is not faith. That is normal. That belongs to God already. And if a person professes to be a Christian, a person professes to be reconciled to God, and can he give a tithe, the Bible says they're robbing God. They're a thief. They're robbing God. Giving tithes is not faith. That already belongs to God. What is faith? Offerings. Verse 8. In tithes, that belongs to God already, and offerings. Hebrews 11, verse 4. By faith, Abel offered. Faith offers. Offered unto God, what did they offer to God? A more excellent sacrifice. People of faith offer sacrifices. Christ says, if you give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, run you ever, shall men give into your bosoms. The Bible says, if you sow bountifully, ye shall also reap bountifully. People of faith give. And a few months ago on the Lord's Day, I was invited to a local Thai church to preach in the pulpit. And I gave them a testimony of normal Christianity, what people of faith do, as I was asked to preach in the mountains. And I went there because my children were very young at the time. I had to go on my own. His wife was taking care of my children who were still very young in the mountains, the borders. were kind of hard for young children and all the disease and the hardships and all those kind of things such as that. Back in those days, those villages, the roofs were made of leaves. And the bathroom were these small little outhouses made of bamboo, and the walls were very short, and people in all the houses, in the backs of the houses, could look over and see you in the bathroom. Why? Because that way they know if somebody's in the bathroom or not. But then, because they didn't have electricity or television, and as they called me a Gawala, Gawala, a white man, though I'm half Vietnamese, they called me a white man, a Gawala, they would all like to look at me when I'm in the bathroom. For some reason, I use the bathroom, taking a shower, butt naked, as I'll take showers, butt naked. They all would be in the backs of their houses looking over at me. So it wasn't easy to go up to those places at that time. Times have changed. Villages have prospered a bit. But at the time, it was very hard. And as I went there on my own, I did not have the help meet for me. My wife, who, praise God, the Bible says, He that found the wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth a favor of the Lord. My wife is a good thing. She is a help meet for me, praise God. And she always takes care of the little things that I often overlook. Because I'm up there just focused on preaching and praying and not thinking about, i got to exchange the money. Is up in those villages where there's no electricity, where the house is made of bamboo, and the roofs are made of leaves. If you go there, big bot bills, there's nowhere to exchange it. So on the Lord's Day, there in this little bamboo church, as I was sitting there, I forgot to change the money in my pocket. All I had was 500 baht in my pocket. The person that brought me to that village, he left the night, that he, the night that he brought me there. He brought me there and then left me. 
said he had to go to Mehon Son, which was a completely different area, had to take care of something, and if he could make it back in time, he would come back to pick me up and take me to other villages, but if he didn't make it back in time, he said there on Monday, the day after the Lord's Day, that the village chief who had a truck, when the few that had a pickup truck, would pick me up, on the Monday morning, and if I paid him a hundred baht, he would take me to the bus station there in Mesot on the Thai Burmese border, where I catch a bus back to Bangkok. At the time, it was only about 300 some baht for the bus from Mesot to Bangkok. Had 500 baht, just had to pay him a hundred baht with a little bit of money left over with that 500 baht. But that 500 baht was a 500 baht bill, and I didn't get any change. And now I'm there in this church, but on the Lord's Day. And part of the worship of the Lord's Day is giving. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter, I believe it's 16. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints, I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. So this order comes from the apostles of the churches of the saints. Verse 2, upon the first day of the week. What day do Christians give? The first day of the week. Now why would Christians give on the first day of the week? Because that's the day Christians assemble in the name of the Lord. This is the New Testament, a better covenant which is established upon better promises. In the New Testament, nowhere is it written that we must keep the Old Testament, Israeli, seventh-day Sabbath. No, in the New Testament, we gather on what day of the week? The first day of the week. Verse 2, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him his door, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. What do we do when we gather the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? We give offerings to the Lord. And we that live by faith, we that walk by faith, following the example of faith in Hebrews 11 verse 4, we offer what unto God? By faith, able offer unto God a more excellent sacrifice then Cain, we who follow these examples of faith, when we give an offering to the Lord, we give a sacrifice. And not just a sacrifice, an excellent sacrifice unto God, as is written Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. We'll keep it in context, verse 15. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Praise God. God supplied the needs of the apostle by the saints, by their giving. Verse 17, not because I desire a gift. No, the apostle Paul wasn't covetous. He wasn't desiring a gift, but as our fruit that may abound to your count. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received Epaphroditus, the things were sent for you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. A more excellent sacrifice is that which is acceptable and well-pleasing to God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. We who follow these examples of faith, we give. And not only we give, we give sacrifices. And not only we give sacrifices, we give an excellent sacrifice unto God. A few months ago, a man told me by phone, he said to me that God told him that I give 50%. I just began laughing. That wasn't God speaking to him. No, we give sacrifices. And all we give sacrifices, an excellent sacrifice unto God. Well-pleasing, acceptable unto God. So there, 
on that Lord's Day. They are in that.